Well, welcome to the Get Fit with Jodell podcast. I am, as usual, Jodell. And so anybody that knows me knows that I'm barefoot most of the time and I'm outdoors most of the time. So today I feel it's only appropriate to do the podcast outside on the ground in bare feet. Um, and since I'm outside, I apologize for any barking backgrounds, noises you might hear or construction or cars, but you get the real world behind me today. So bear with me, no pun intended. Um, periodically, I like to feature products that I myself love and use daily. Um, so you might call this a podcast, but it's also, we're going to be talking a lot about how our feet are our foundation and keeping your feet well is really where it's at if you want a well body. And I've, I've called on somebody that I really think can um, give us the lowdown on just how to care for our feet and maybe get out of those tight running shoes that you've been wearing for a while. So I'm excited to talk about this product I've been wearing now for about five years. So this is not something that I just came across recently. His product uh, has been in my uh, at the front of my door because I wear it even in the winter for about five years now. Um, as a professional stand-up paddle athlete, a hiker, a a runner from time to time just for fun and someone who hates shoes you will usually see me barefoot and I'm in love with a pair of running sandals called paleo shoes yeah so that's what we're talking about today I'm on my fourth pair of these shoes because I wear them into the ground and I had to bring out the founder uh, Robert now you're gonna have to help me say your last name ultra Bob because he also goes by ultra Bob what's your last name uh, Sekaresh. Sekaresh. so Hungarian yes. right Yes, Hungarian. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. So he's the founder and CEO of Paleo Shoes, as well as an author, an ultra marathon runner, and a barefoot enthusiast with about 9,000 miles under his belt, which is pretty cool. And I've invited him on to talk to us all about the benefits of minimalistic footwear or sandals like we're going to be talking about today. So Ultra Bob, welcome. Thank you. So nice to see you. I, I <laughs> see your order come across my desk for so many years. And, and I always wonder, who is Jodell? Yeah. Now I get to see her. Yeah, so it's, it's wonderful to e meet you. And thank you for creating a product that, you know, when I find something that works, I'm monogamous. I stick with it. I don't look outside the box because if it works for me, then I'm going to keep using it. And your footwear is that for me. So this isn't just a spiel about footwear. We're actually going to be talking today about why we need to take care of our feet. And so I really wanted to bring you on for that. So can you can you briefly tell us what what brought you into more of a minimalistic approach to footwear or have you always been into that? Uh, I got interested in, uh, when I was 62, I just retired from teaching. I'd been a special ed teacher, an administrator, a custodian. And I was looking in my mirror one day and uh, I was remembering I ran the Western States 100 years ago, and I had or, or earned this silver buckle. Nice. And um, I was thinking, I want to feel good one more time before I die. Aww. So with that, I went to a paleo diet. And then I started looking at my footwear. And I realized over the years, when I was uh, uh, had a, a child growing up, my uncle ran barefoot for 60 years. And wow. in the winter time and the snow, he put on boots. And so in my mind, I said, well, Barefoot running must have something to it. <clears throat> but I live in an urban environment, and so it's really hard to go completely barefoot because of the, you know, even though they pick up the doggy doo-doo and the glass, it's treacherous on your feet. So I invented these shoes, and I call them paleo shoes. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they were uh, designed to let your feet move the maximum amount and still have sole protection. And I was able to get the trademark barefoot with sole. Yeah, That's I love that. Really. I and love it was, that. It's, it's, it was really been changed my whole life. I, uh, by the time I, I'm 74 now and for 12 years, uh, I've been feeling great. I run in those shoes. They let my feet expand and uh, air blows over your feet. Like you, if you feel your hands right now, how nice they feel. And yeah. if you're barefoot, you know how nice they feel. But if you're out oh, running. Yeah. Barefoot, I'm barefoot right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I have my paleo shoes right next to me. So we'll be discussing what the design of those too. Yeah. So I went through the, a lot of design. I took all the blisters, the pain. I took all the, 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 everything it takes to design a pair of shoes. I just decided to rethink running shoes. And uh, it turns out that 
your feet are so strong and evolution made them so strong. You really don't need those shoes to confine them and hurt them. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that once I went to my shoes and did a little barefoot running, but very little, my back cleared up, didn't hurt anymore. My knees didn't hurt. And with the paleo diet, I just felt like a million bucks. And so I started running races and I said, no one's going to believe that my shoes, you know, the Nike spends what millions and millions of dollars advertising their shoes. And they're basically just an, an advertising platform, you know, where they should put their product. So after running those miles, I said, the only way people will believe me is if I do it. And I said, then you start thinking, well, you know, anybody can walk in sandals. So I said, well, I'll run the Boston Marathon. So the first step was to train in my sandals, qualify and run the Boston Marathon. And that was a few years back. I met Bill Rogers and uh, he was he finished the race that year with Bobby Gibb. And so I had them sign my sandals. <laughs> so in it, it says. Uh, oh, yes, I see that. It says, uh, let's run forever. So that's yeah. kind of what my theme is. Doing. Let's run forever. And uh, what the shoes allowed me to do is at the Boston Marathon, I figured out how to run marathons. And I wrote that chapter. But then the last chapter I wanted to write was how to run ultra marathons. Mm. And for an ultra marathon, or you want to run 100 miles. If you can't run 100, if you can run 100 miles, that's your ultimate challenge. So I did worked on that and it uh, I failed two years ago last year I finished the distance and uh, it's out in the desert and it's called the Havilena 100 mm -hmm. and I finished the distance but I was over time so I found that here I am at age 73 and I can run a 100 mile race very few people can do that and I ran it in paleo shoes some of the young guys will run races in paleo shoes but the other designs they chafe your feet and they uh you know, they're okay for, you know, knocking around, but they don't really help. Mm -hmm. But the thing, the other good thing about paleo shoes that I really like is I can be out running and every time I'm running at the finish, I'll take off my shoes and I can just walk through the sand, the dirt, barefoot and get that earth grounding, which, you know, is just so important. And uh, I just slip them back on. I don't have to dust the rocks off, the sand, the mud. It just, it just works. I love that you mentioned the earth grounding. That's so that's so why I got interested in these is because yes, they're rubber soles, so you're not grounding while you're wearing them, but it's the closest I can get to feeling like I'm I'm barefoot, you know, like I it's they're a very thin yeah. sole, like you said they bend with your feet and then like you said I can quickly slip them off. I can wear them on my paddleboard. I can wear them when I'm just walking, um, hiking, and sometimes your feet might even like just touch a little leaf or something like that and then you're and then you're grounded you know so it's it's something that I have come to feel like it's a part of my day to day like I wear them to the gym and the only downfall I've found about these shoes is I went into one gym and I was kicked out because I did I had open toed <laughs> shoes so, and I was like no these are my athletic shoes and they're like no you have to have closed toed shoes so that was the only detriment but I don't think people are aware of how important it is to not have our feet enclosed and toes pushed together. And you have a philosophy that I really love and it's all athleticism depends on strong feet, great balance and ancestral nutrition. And so can you speak to that? Like the importance of yes, strong uh, feet? You know, uh, when I go to the, I went to, I was trying to run in paleo shoes on a cruise ship <laughs> and I walked in and they just, they were, they were going to take me and throw me overboard oh, no. because they were so upset that I would dare walk into their gym with a pair of sandals. Sure. So I had to go run up on the deck. But, but uh, what happens is when you're in shoes and I see these newer shoes, they keep getting worse and worse right. because now they've put in these little plates that bounce. So you're pogoing. I look at it pogoing down hill <laughs> and they say, well, I can run faster. And I'm thinking, if I want to go faster, I'll get a bike. Right. <laughs> I want to be able to move faster with strong feet. So yeah. the, the sandals let your feet really uh, get strong. So they say, well, why don't you go to a gym? I don't go to a gym. I said, because they don't have any programs for strong feet. 
So I'm waiting for somebody like you or somebody that starts to figure out, okay, in my gym, we have the barefoot room. And in the barefoot room, what we do is we have the little different exercises, all different levels where you can go build your foot strength. The other problem is if without strong feet, you, I can't show it real, I'll explain to you. Like whenever you're running in shoes, your heels, you're hit landing on your heels, you're using those cushions and you're pogoing. But the problem is that pressure gets absorbed in your joints. And so over a long period of time, you have joint problems, plus you're unstable. You're going to catch your foot and your body's just not going to be as stable. When you're running barefoot or in sandals, you go a little bit forward on your forefoot and you catch yourself with your thighs and calves and it takes the pressure off of your back. And it, it, it really makes, it makes your whole body strong. And when you listen, if you read Eric Orton's book, uh, uh, Cool Impossible, he, he's the one of the ones on the, that's it, uh, the expert on it. And he says, all athleticism, you have to have strong feet. He has balancing exercises and techniques, but I don't see it in the gym there for some reason, they can fight COVID, but they can't fight their feet. <laughs> but that's just me. I, I'm not a gym rat. Sure. So. Well, you'll be happy to know that at my gym, I'm known as the barefoot instructor because a lot of the, t- the classes that I teach, I go barefoot. And so a lot of my students now have decided, well, if you're not wearing shoes, I'm not wearing shoes. So I'm like, go for it. So yeah, it can be done. It's just a matter of educating your tribe about like, hey, if you're not going to use the muscles in your feet, if you're going to keep them locked in shoes all the time, then expect those muscles to atrophy. Just like if you kept a cast on your arm and you want to grow biceps, but you're not using your arm right the muscles not going to grow so it's like you're putting a cast on your feet and our our feet have tons of muscles in them that need to move and they need to be worked and worked out and one way to do that is with very minimalistic shoes then the other thing that happens is you you really improve your balance yeah Uh, you do that balance on a paddleboard i really admire that because you know that's a sport in which your feet are getting really strong you know, if you're just swimming, your feet are just flipping there. But if when you're on that board, I'm thinking that's really a good oh, way absolutely. to keep your balance and strong. What happens as you get older, and I'm in that age now, uh, you know, 70 plus, is um, you lose your balance, you trip, fall, break a hip, and they can't fix broken hips. Then you're going to die pretty quick. My mother died that way. She was mm. in quite elderly, but... You start losing your balance in those shoes. I watch people walking in those big, heavy shoes and you see them, they kind of clunk around. And if they don't, they don't have any leeway there to catch their balance or up an inch or so off the ground and they lose their balance. And if, if you'll notice, you'll start to notice your health care provider will be starting asking you, do, do you have balance problems? It's that balance. And when you're older, your bones get fragile. You don't have that, that support. And the other thing that, barefoot running does is it, it, it it strengthens your bones and sandal running because you can't just kind of lock in and pogo you, you, your, the, as your muscles are catching you, they're tugging on the bones and the bones respond by making them, <clears throat> make them stronger. So I, I like the, the barefoot sandal running because it helps with the balance as you get older and it just helps balance naturally. I see people trip and fall all the time. And even when I'm out on that trail, when I'm out running a hundred mile trail or even a 50 mile trail, you have to be paying attention. And you, you it's, it just helps you long-term. If you just want to be out there and just finish the race and uh, you know have a short career, that's the way to do it. But if you want to have a long career, you need to really work on your balance, no matter what your sport. Mm-hmm. Well, and I had found that big clunky shoes, whether it was, you know, I was out walking or running or teaching a class and I was locked in shoes, they felt heavy to me. I couldn't, I couldn't be myself. I kept telling myself, I'm like, I don't feel like I'm giving my all because these shoes feel like they're weighing me down. So originally I got into the five fingers, the Vibram five fingers. Mm-hmm. Those were the first ones I went into and I had to transition because your feet get sore, your calves get sore, the muscles of your ankles get sore. And when I found your shoes, then I was like, I 
that was the lightest I could find. Like the Vibrams are pretty light, but then I found your shoes and I'm like, it feels like I have nothing on my feet, it, but yet uh, my feet aren't in pain, you know, running on asphalt or something like that, or trail running. They feel comfortable. They feel loose and they're able to breathe. Like you said, with your hands, your hands are free and you can feel the breeze on them and your feet need that too. And so that's, what made me transition is I wanted that lightest footwear I could have to get out in nature with. And so I really encourage people to try it. Now, how do you recommend if somebody's like hearing this and whether they're not a runner or whatever, but they want to be, you know, they're an outdoor enthusiast, um, how would somebody transition? So they're maybe listening to this with shoes on their feet. What do they, what do you recommend for transitioning? I recommend that they, uh, wherever possible around their house is to, go barefoot. Mm -hmm. I know people that never take their shoes off till they go to bed. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm thinking, you know, that doesn't help your feet because Mm -hmm. then you just start gradually getting stronger by going barefoot as much as possible. And Mm -hmm. if you can get outside, even on the cement, the cement will ground you. But if you get into the grass and walk barefoot, and when you decide that you want to go get a minimalist sandal of any kind, you, you need to transition into it. Because as you you walk is fine, you can walk and transition it pretty quick. But if your feet are really uh, soft underneath and haven't calloused up even a little bit, you could end up with a blister pretty quick. Uh, people say, "Well, what about between your toes?" And I say, "Well, it's not like a flip flop." Although, although they always say, "There he goes in his flip flops running the marathon." What's wrong with that guy? <laughs> I say, "Well." The the back strap holds your foot kind of in a balance. And and once you adjust the shoe so that your foot is more or less floating in between those those, uh, laces, then you can can start walking. So I'd say walk. And if you can, walk out a little bit, take the sandals off and walk back barefoot. Mm -hmm. Walk barefoot a little ways and put the sandals on and then gradually go into running. But just take your time because it took years and years and years for your feet to weaken up. Yeah. So I like to talk about trying to remember what it was like when you were young and you could run barefoot and you felt good mm-hmm. because genetically, most people still are capable of doing that. You know, they may have gotten a little fluffy over the years and they're they're putting on a little weight, but uh, starting out slowly and start walking and then put them on, walk back and just just take your time. That's what I recommend the, the best way to do it. No, for sure. I love that, that, I mean, just starting by, you know, just walking in the grass or like you mentioned, just walk around your house barefoot at the start and then start to try the shoes on for little bits of time. I know with the five fingers, the Vibrams, when I first got into those, it was like one day I would wear my running shoes, the next day I'd wear my Vibrams and your feet would actually get, like I said, you'd get sore. And so it takes, like you said, some transition time to like wear it a little bit and then give them a break, wear it a little bit, give them a break, but they will adjust and you'll feel them get stronger. Just like you mentioned on the paddleboard when I first pe- have people stand up on a lesson and myself included the first time I was on a paddleboard my feet started aching about 30 minutes into it and I realized how weak my feet were because they'd been compacted in shoes and so things like stand up paddleboarding or just walking barefoot will strengthen your feet over time so I yeah I really like your approach with that yeah and you know with your feet there are so many nerves in the feet mm. that if you cut that off, that's just to me, it's like you're wearing gloves all the time. Yeah. And what if you wore gloves all the time? You just lose that little sense of touch in your feet. Uh, you know, they're so designed to be able to let you go nimbly through rocky terrain and things that yeah, it, it kind of opens a whole big portion of your brain that just most people have just covered that up with the shoes. Mm-hmm. And when I designed the shoes, I wanted to do what, um, I felt like Bill Bowerman when he was trying to make the best shoe for his Nike runner, his runners that end up being Nike is uh, he stopped because he couldn't make any money on them. Mm. You know, there's no place to advertise your swish. <laughs> so yeah. he, he didn't, he didn't go that far. So I wanted to rethink it and go to the absolute lightest, sturdiest yeah. shoe you could do without actually going barefoot mm-hmm. because the urban environment it hurts if you get a cut on your foot, you know, <laughs> you walk carefully and, you know, I, I run so many miles and the only time I've ever taken injuries when I'm, 
not paying attention and looking someplace else. But to fill a couple full water bottles, a mountain trail, my paleo shoes and the air is blowing nice and everything's cool and the sun on your feet and the wind, it's just, I just can't, ex it's hard to explain how wonderful it makes you feel. You know, because you're barefoot right now outside in beautiful <laughs> weather. <laughs> Yeah, and if I wouldn't gross people out, I'd show you the calluses on the bottom of my feet because my feet are like dog paws. So like they, I'm so, I mean, I walk on gravel, I walk on asphalt, it doesn't bother me. And my husband's got these really tender feet. And so he, he hasn't quite transitioned into the barefoot feet or the barefoot minimalistic shoes yet, but he admires it like he wants to. So yeah, he's working that way. <laughs> what, I, what I do after my run is I run about a half a mile on the sidewalk. Oh, nice. And there's sidewalks are pretty smooth over here in Huntington Beach. So that gradually will um, wear away some of that calluses. Well, and I love the pictures of you where your feet are filthy. Like you've gone on these long <laughs> runs and they are covered in dirt and you don't, you don't know what that feels like until you do it. Like sometimes it feels really good to get dirt on your feet. Like it feels good to get your feet dirty and it just feels more natural. And if, even if you think about, you know, the earliest humans and the, and the Bible day humans where they talk about being in sandals, you know, these, this is the footwear for us. If we're going to wear footwear is the very bare bones basics that you can get away with. Yeah. People, they conflate, being uh, un unhealthy and dirty. Mm. Like, you know, they think because your feet are uncovered that they're all covered with viruses and all kinds of uh, uh, just debris. But if it's covered with sand, my favorite run is when I near the uh, find an area that's sandy, I make a note of it so that when I come back by, I take my shoes off and run through that little sand. Mm. The feet are dirty, but they're their feet they're supposed to be dirty and it's really very comfortable and that if you can find some nice warm sand or if I can get near the water I, I see you're near a lot of lakes over there so there must be some shorelines you can go you know oh, wade yeah. in but you go paddle so it's it just feels so good I mean <laughs> you can't explain it to people that easily I mean when they try it then they just love it yeah, and I get a lot of compliments on the paleo shoes and people are like, you run in those or you hike in those or I'll go hiking with people and they're like, where's your hiking boots? And I'm like, these are my hiking boots. And <laughs> so I actually had a friend of mine ordered a pair of yours uh, to try because she was so interested because I a lot of people just love the look of them just for, you know, sandals to wear. And she now can't stay out of them. Like even in winter, both her and I are like wearing leg warmers and wearing our sandals so that we keep our ankles warm, but we've got our sandals on so <laughs> <laughs> well my niece uses uh, i use in the winter time i i've run in a little bit of snow but i use uh those tozy socks the indian yeah. jets or any of those mm -hmm. that'll work pretty good i have a it's an interesting story my niece that wanted me to make some shoes because i grew up in western pennsylvania that could handle that weather mm -hmm. and it turned out to be the water moccasins she ordered a pair for me last summer and about six maybe six weeks later she ran that 68 mile race. She just put them on. She, like you, she hikes a little bit. She canoes a little bit, runs a little bit. And I said, Elena, how did you run? Uh, six, it was a 69 race, 69 mile race. It was, um, it was called the uh, uh, Possum's Revenge, a wow. virtual race. And she ran on the Ghost Town Trail, which is a, a railroad bike uh, trails to rails trail. Mm -hmm. And I just said, you know, I'm pretty tough, but Elena, I, I, I couldn't believe that she, the same shoes that she ordered and she said she didn't really break them in. She just put them on and she said, I just like kind of do things. Yeah. And that was the thing that I like about it is the, the shoes, the way they're designed is they don't they don't rub as much. I mean, if you can get grit okay. and stuff under the laces, it, it'll it'll give you a blister. But pretty much. Of course, she's a she's a woman and she's tough. Women are tougher than men. I mean, it, genetically, it's just unbelievable. But she was able to go do it. And uh, the shoes are nice that way because you know, she wear them in the snow in Western Pennsylvania. And I look and she's doing the mud races. And I said, oh, my gosh, Elena, how can you do that? And it helps if you're 40, 35 years old. Like, <laughs> your feet are still good. I'm impressed that you can walk on all that stone and everything and it just doesn't doesn't hurt.
yeah i'm I mean, just i'm like do- like i said they're like dog paws so it's like i just go for it and it yeah they i built up the calluses enough to do that but it's nice to hear a man say that a woman is has a little more uh endurance than men yeah it's nice it's refreshing <laughs> but it's, it's uh, just over the years you know that they they so many like i've had ants die in childbirth mm-hmm. so you imagine how strong they have to be to survive. It's just to me, it just realizes why men, you know, they outlive us. You outlive us so much. <laughs> that's, just, that's just the way it is. <laughs> so. Well, you mentioned that there that it helped you with uh, some injuries, right? Like it, you had some back injuries and stuff like that as far as like going more barefoot. So let's talk about some specific conditions, like things like hips and knees. What have you seen with improvement with that? Okay, with, with me in particular, uh, you know, I had run 100-mile races in a silver buckle back way back in 83, and I'd run marathons every year till I was 62, but my knees were hurting, backs were hurting, and um, I did have uh, orthoscopic surgery, but with, from the surgery, I decided that uh, he, the doc says, well, you still have plenty of cartilage, so I was really happy about that, and I said, I got to stop der- damaging my cartilage. Mm-hmm. And so I, I went to the paleo shoes and changed running from a heel striper to a four foot stripe. Yeah. So what that lets your whole body catch your, your weight. And I guess being able to finish a hundred miles and 12 years later, it proves the point that you can recover from those injuries. Now that people will ask, well, what about your foot injuries? And especially that part between your toes. And I said, you know, I, I haven't had an injury there in a long time because, um, the way the foot balance, the way it balances on your foot's fine. I said, well, what about you get rocks in them? And I said, yeah, they'll let you know you're alive, but you can <laughs> shake it out. Yeah. And every once in a while, there's one little spot where I get a rock that I have to stop and shake it out. Mm-hmm. And in that 100 mile race, I was on the trail for 31 hours. And there was only a couple of times when I had to shake a rock or two out. Mm-hmm. So the other thing is you got to be, it, it's, I say it's forced nimbleness. You were forced to be nimble. Mm. You can't go clunking around, dragging your feet and bumping into stuff. You have to place your foot very carefully. And if you do that, you won't say you won't get injured, but your injuries will be minimalized. Mm. You know, I mean, you'll get, uh, you know, you might scrape a toe once in a while and hit something, but it just forces you to be careful. <laughs> in your case, you're so tough, you don't even care. You just <laughs> run right over it. <laughs> Well, I have like stepped on a piece of glass before and I went inside and I'm like, what's the, why is there blood on the floor? Like, and then I look at my feet and I'm like, oh, I must have stepped on that. Like, I don't even know. So, but um, no, to go back to what you were saying about the injury prevention. Yeah. As soon as I started doing the more barefoot approach, I shifted from being a heel striker to landing on the balls of my feet. And that was a game changer for my knees too, because I used to run a lot and my knees were just beat up. I'd run eight miles a day, which uh, uh, compared good. to what you do, that's not very well, that's, much. That's, but for me, it was a lot. That's and, a lot. And so that my knees were just aching all the time. And that's when I was in shoes. And so as soon as I switched to a barefoot minimalistic approach, and then sometimes just running barefoot, it was a game changer. Like your, your body naturally adjusts to the way a human should run when you give it the proper conditions to do it in, which is really cool. Yeah, that's two million years of evolution. <laughs> so what have you seen as far as like plantar fasciitis or people with those kind of issues? Uh, what I did, like I have right now, after that race, I'm still fighting a little bit of a Achilles tendon hmm. because, you know, your, your body's stretching out. So I use the foam roller. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's painful. But uh, if, you, if you have an injury, that's the one to do. And the other thing I use is the Strasburg strap. It's that sock that you put on that has a, a, a like a strap that pulls it up mm-hmm. those those help me with any of my plantar fasciitis and uh, Achilles tendon because most people of all their lives have been especially the older you get they all their lives they've been uh, in shoes and their calf muscles have shortened mm. so as that's pulling on the Achilles tendon you need to do you need to take some uh, ways you need to work around it the foam roller is the fastest best best way to do it i call it floor time mm. so if you get your floor time in it's going to prevent a lot of injuries I, I don't know if you, if you do a lot of floor time or not but yeah 
Yeah, no, I love that you call it that because uh, that's that's something I start my day with every day is floor time where really? I call I go ground time like I go outside and do it on the ground. So I'll do, you know, some breath work, some stretches, maybe the five Tibetan rites, mm -hmm. sometimes different things like that, just to get all of my joints moving, but also stretching my feet like while I'm doing other stretches, I might pull my toes back or stretch them out, get it movement in between each toe mm -hmm. kind of thing. But yeah, I love that you call it floor time. These are all great little nuggets that people if they'll just incorporate just a minute or two throughout their day of doing doing these things so it'll make a world of difference and if you start with uh if you, if you can i'm pretty inflexible because of so many years of running if you can sit on your feet that's probably like the best one of them all where you fold your feet back behind you and you, you can actually sit on them and let it stretch things out the reason i call it floor time is the old grandmothers they would always tell the moms the new moms put the baby on the floor, on the floor. Yeah. give them floor time how much floor time yeah you can you know they pick their heads up and they move around and finally they roll over and a lot of times they, they just put them in their crib and just say you know feed them when they're hungry mm -hmm. and I found that if I can get down on the floor every day and do something whatever it is the roller works or that I have a percussion massager and a few other techniques that that, that helps it really just get your day going. It gets the blood moving a little bit and you're stretching out. And uh, I do a lot of isometrics mm, too. That, okay. that really helps a lot. Yeah. Because it's fast. And uh, one thing that I really enjoy now is my toenails are back to normal after being in shoes for so long. <laughs> See, people like really get a lot of toenail issues from their, you know, if they're a runner, it's rubbing on the inside of the shoe, or maybe they're just wearing shoes that are not really made for their feet. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's one thing. So can you talk about like toenail issues? Like when you're a barefoot, you know, running sandal wear, you don't have to worry about toenail. It's falling off. And well, then, what I worry about with the toenails is uh, they look unsightly if you're not being careful. <laughs> I think a lot of people get toenails, like they lose them and they break up. It's because they're not taking proper care. Mm -hmm. you, know, you cut them square, cut them tight, and you're not going to have a problem. I'll notice every once in a while, if I let a toenail, I cut them square, let it get a little long, it'll nick the end. You know, I'll say, why is that toe hurting right in the inside? And you look and you see that it's nicking your, your foot. Right. Right. And you go, oh, so with toenail care, um, I was surprised on that 100 mile race. I did hit a, I did hit rock, one rock, and I didn't think I had any damage. But later on, I lost the toenail. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the, it's so nice. Everybody says, gee, your feet look so good. And I go, you know, I don't look good, but my feet look great. My feet are like so strong. They say, well, do you have a problem when you're running with your feet? And I said, you know, I ran that 100 mile race on my feet for 31 hours and I said what hurt was everything else because of the knees the knees didn't hurt but the muscles and the you know the whole your whole metabolism trying to burn that much oxygen for that many hours so as far as the toes where you the toenails where you'll get hurt is if you like um aren't paying attention and you hit into a rock or something mm -hmm. but I think I've lost this is the only toenail I've lost and thousands of miles <laughs> and that was under I knew I was going to pay a price yeah. for running 100 miles but it's it was so worth it but, well, yeah yeah um, let's talk about let's kind of transition now and talk about the construction so I have here the water moccasin and um, I need to get the mastodon because is that what it's called the the brown ones because those are so cool but I haven't found them um, so I need to find them, but just to show you how much I wear mine, here's the bottom. So they're pretty muddy right now because I've been playing in the, in the mud, but, um, let's talk about the construction because I have tried various brands out there. Um, I'll even say one brand is earth runners, which are fine. I have a pair occasionally I'll wear them, but they're so stiff that I can't, get the feeling of being barefoot when I'm in them. And then I have another pair that someone on Etsy handmade with these great leather straps that go around and around and around your feet. And the straps do not stay on because there's so much of them and they're great sandals, but I can't wear them every day. This is so simple and it's such a easy adjustment and it fits all kinds of feet and it never moves. Once you put it in position, it does not move. And it feels like second skin because what you were saying is like when it goes in between your toes people are like doesn't that bother you but the shoe hugs your foot like a like a jacket and it doesn't move once it's on your foot yeah 
Uh, it's why I call barefoot with soul. Yeah, exactly. Um, th this is my pair that I've been wearing lately. I use it to paint. So <laughs> nice. You know, I just end up as my go-to because a water moccasin is the easiest to adjust. Yeah. Like you said, you can adjust it very easily with, with the, the thing. Now, these I've worn quite a while. And so you can see that uh, it just form fits to the foot. Yes. And my yes. foot will, uh, this this hangs onto the back. And I, I found now that I'm bringing it down lower on my heel. Mm -hmm. And then I use this button to snap it, bring it a little tighter. Mm -hmm. And then if, um, if I'm on a race, these are my watermark the my uh, mastodon trails yeah. i wear these i wore these the other week for like a 25 30 mile run but what i do with those is i do a second knot mm. because when i'm running if you're going down hills a lot and it was i run a mountainous train mm. and uh when you're going downhill it will sometimes and going uphill it'll it'll loosen this just a little bit and then I, on this particular shoe, because it's leather, I put little cord ties to hold my adjustment. Okay. And I adjust the pressure with this. But the water, the water moccasin pretty much, this is, we'll show a new pair. Okay. They come flat, mm -hmm. you know, perfectly flat. And then as you wear it, as it adjusts to your body, these all come up. And, and for me, I hate to throw them away once they're, they're I just wear them and, I had a lady order a pair and she says, well, they're worn out. I said, send me a, send me a picture and you could see the foot through the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> it was like totally wore out the lace to held up real good. So what I designed it for is I want the, it to hold with a little bit of flex. It holds to your body and this balances it clearly. And so the idea is barefoot with soul. Mm -hmm. I wanted you to, you know, it's ideal to go barefoot, but you know, there's so much distance people want to run. And the other problem is there's just, it's not debris. I mean, I, I'm pretty alert. I can see most of the glass. And if you, unless you're in the grass where the grass is most dangerous, because you can't see what's under there when the lawn cuts it. So, you, you know, you can fall in a hole and catch your toe. Uh, the other thing is if you don't pick your feet up, and step them down real carefully like you should you'll you can catch your toe mm -hmm. so i tell people it just kind of forces you to do a good running style and the engineering is these triangles here mm -hmm. just hold everything in it's hard to see because it's a black on a black yes. but um, this one you can see better so you have these triangles holding it and this triangle it just kind of works with all the triangles of your body and it makes it nice yeah. on these shoes i learned I, i'm punching an extra safety hole because okay. i had i was running a, a 30 mile race and i broke the, the the aglet so i luckily i had a golf key and i had to prepare <laughs> what i try to do is i run the shoe until it fails yeah so I don't know where I'm going to be and if it's going to fail. So yeah. I have a little safety kit I cover with me. And on the leather shoes, I punch an extra hole. On the water moccasins, I've really never had any lace fails on the trail. So I just don't worry about it. I can see when it's when it's getting real close to failure. And I, I've given enough margin in the design so that it doesn't have really... Uh, if something comes up, I'll, work, I'll rework the design. Yeah, and I'm not gonna give somebody something that I wouldn't wear. Yeah, but. no, and they're great because you know we talked about the Vibram five fingers. Well, they have Vibram soles on here too. Yeah. So I mean, you do a good quality construction, and you've sold me on the mastodons. I'm gonna have to get me a pair of those now because I've I've, <laughs> I've always just stuck with the water moccasins, but now I'm like, no, I gotta get some of those too. But the the one thing I'll say is like when when you were saying I ha it's hard for me to get rid of a pair when they break down. So I have all my old pairs. I haven't <laughs> ever thrown any away because I'm always like, if one shoe dies, I still have like one shoe of the one pair that still is good. So I could like interchange them if I needed to. So I have like all my little backup mo water moccasins. <laughs> so anyway, no, it's, it's great. Sometimes I can repair them if you want to send oh, them back. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> I can change the laces and stuff. Send them to me and I'll repair them. Just oh, no good. problem. <laughs> no, that's awesome. So let's talk about like, what's, what's, 
where can people find um, their pair and what's next for Paleo Shoes? Are you working on anything? Um, you can get them on eBay and you can buy them on uh, Amazon. Amazon is, is a little harder to work with than eBay, but you always work, or, order them from my website, paleoshoes.com, and I'll make sure everything's okay. Um, what I'm working on is I'm, I'm working on what I'm calling the, uh, the uh, I did the Mastodon Trail. I want to do the Bighorn Ultra. And it's a little heavier sole. And, you know, it's going to be, it's designed for the 100 mile race. Okay. I, I finished it. I, it te I tested it in the 100 mile race last fall. And so it's ready to go. But I think I'm going to leave that be a special order because uh, no point in going to all that trouble for somebody to say, oh, I don't like them and throw them in the trash because it takes, it takes a little more work. So I'm working on that. And I'm working, I have another design I've been working on that is uh, Ice Age Earthers, what I'm calling them. And there's all leather. Oh, buddy. The problem is all leather, it, it just conform, it just feels so good. And if you're not nimble, you're going to hurt yourself. And I said, so I got to do is, you know, I got to put big notices on it. You know, this is a slippery shoe. This oh. is like a slipper. Be careful. Don't run in the water. But uh, that one really feels good. So it's once the leather gets a little damp from your sweat and you're actually grounding. That's awesome. So, well, if you need a test dummy for that, you just send me a pair of those and I'll give you all the feedback you need because oh, that's okay. right up my alley. When it's cold out and for some reason it's like we had bitter temperatures, we had like negative temperatures this last week. And I was like, all right, I break out these handmade like little moccasin booties that somebody made for me out of deer skin. And cool. I'll go out in the snow with those and they keep your feet warm. So it's like they they work just like when Native Americans yeah, use they, them, you know. These are just a little slippery. Okay, but, uh, okay I got your size and order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be anything yeah, custom, your big horns or your leather, whatever you need. So yeah, that's <laughs> great. Well, I hope people will check it out, paleoshoes.com. And can they find you on social media too? Yes, I'm on Paleo Shoes. Okay. Um, I'm trying to, I'm debating whether I should use more Instagram. I use Instagram and then feed it through to Paleo Shoes okay. so they can see more about some of the crazy things I'm out there doing. I mean, it's, you know, I'm the old guy that uh, my favorite thing is when the young people can't pass me and they say, I really wanted to beat you in that race. And I said, well, <laughs> you can beat me, but you got to work for it. <laughs> you got to so get a pair a of Paleo of Shoes, right? <laughs> <laughs> And that's great. But, so uh, um, It's good. And if you want to talk about diet sometime, I'll, I'll tell you what I do for ancestral nutrition. Uh, yeah. You know, I, there are a lot of people. I, this is the, just something to think about. This is a question that I had for so many years. I said, you know, 12 years. I could not convince people how good it feels to feel good and how easy it is to feel good. Okay. So uh, I finally figured out what the problem is. But anyway, we'll talk about that maybe sometime if you're interested in it, or it'll be in the book. Yeah. Well, let's, you know, let's wrap up the podcast with that. I think that's a great way to um, wrap it up is to let's hear your thoughts on ancestral nutrition. I would love to know that. Don't eat anything that's been invented in the last 500 years, which includes <laughs> sugar. <laughs> it's a good but motto. It's hard to convince, how do you convince people? It feels it's so easy to feel good. And it's, why wouldn't you do it? But there's, they have the reasons. <laughs> I think I know what they are. Uh, well, I agree with you. People don't know how good they can possibly feel. They have no idea because some people are like, well, I feel fine. And I'm like, do you want to feel fine or do you want to feel amazing? You know, like there, <laughs> there's, you may not realize your potential until you go, hmm, let me just remove some of these things and just see, just see what happens and do it for more than a couple of days, do it for a couple of months and just see, just notice, you know? So yeah, yeah I love your approach to that. So like hey, your hey. typical day, a day in the life of an ultra runner, what would you eat? What would I eat? I, yeah. I'm kind of one of those guys. I start out with a uh, late breakfast. I do intermittent fasting mm -hmm. and I try to get all my meals in, in that intermittent fasting point. So we don't usually eat till around noon, have like uh, eggs and vegetables and that sort of thing. And then for dinner, we just have a high protein meal mm -hmm. and uh, with plenty of vegetables and there's no carbohydrate, no real carbohydrates other than you know, we'll have some potatoes or a little bit of rice. Yeah. And I'm good to go. And on the, when I'm running, I run mostly on water. Okay. 
Like you'll see, I see people that are out walking and they got a Gatorade bottle. So I'm going, okay, guys, <laughs> you're not going to get, you're not going to get strong just drinking, sucking Gatorade every five steps. Yeah. And so uh, the, the other, that's the other thing with ancestral nutrition is our bodies need water. Mm. I drink a lot of coffee, but um, that's my addiction. But if you, if you're going to be strong, you just get used to drinking water. You know, when you go out, I take two water bottles and if it's, if it's more than 10 miles, I'll drink water. But uh, usually I don't really, I just have the water bottles when I'm over 10 miles okay. and the water makes you strong. And, you know, you say, you got to stay away from all of the, I mean, you don't have to be crazy about it. You have a few drinks here and there, but uh, if you want to get strong, it's the ancestral nutrition and the, it's pure water. Mm -hmm. I do, I do filter the water a little bit. That's great. Yeah. It's okay. One of my, my, one of my favorite things to do is to be barefoot outside holding a cup of coffee. So when you said <laughs> I'm a big coffee drinker and you like being barefoot, you're, that's my that's kind fine. of guy right there. So yeah. I saw your coffee stuff and I, I, know, I know every kind of coffee there is. I have cowboy coffee and I have everything. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. You can't go wrong with coffee and being barefoot if you want to have a good, a good start to a good day. So yeah. <laughs> Well, Ultra Bob, okay. this has been ultra fun to talk with you today, <laughs> and I hope people will check out Paleo Shoes. They'll check out um, just the things that you're doing and watch all of the amazing ways you inspire other people. You're very inspiring, so I appreciate that about you. And yes, keep me in the loop about those shoes. I'll ch I'll be your okay. test dummy. So, <laughs> well, thank you for inviting me. I, I see your name so many times, and it's it's uh, you're as sparkling as I thought you would be. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Well, I, pre I appreciate a quality product and that's what you're putting out there. So I wanted to make sure people know about you and you guys check them out. And that's, okay. that's what we're going to say for now. So everybody go outside, go play in the sunshine and in the grass. And we'll All see right. you. We'll see you on the flip side. <laughs> we spend a lot of time in our life these days on Zoom or on FaceTime or on a computer and you really have to dial in that blue light exposure if you find that you are someone who is chronically on a device. And that's why I recommend the daylight blockers from Swanwick Sleep. I use them in many of my podcasts and I use them anytime I'm on a Zoom that's kinda in the midst of the day when it's really bright outside already and my screen is bright. I only want so much blue light during the day and mostly I get that from the sun. I don't want any extra from my computer. So if you really want to dial in your sleep at night, get your circadian rhythm and your blue light exposure in the day dialed in. Then after the sun goes down, if you're still on Zoom, which you got to go outside at some point and get some grounding if you're on that device so much, but get their nighttime blockers so that at least if you're on that Zoom call after the sun goes down, you can still release melatonin and sleep well. So if that's you, if you're looking for those kind of products to help dial in that circadian rhythm, dial in your sleep at night, wake up refreshed so you can do those Zoom meetings all over again, make sure you visit swanwicksleep.com and use my code GETFIT10. Okay, that's G-E-T-F-I-T-10, the number 10, and uh, enter that for 10% off your pair of day blockers or nighttime blue blockers.